So guys, this here is the Aiken FEV Geek 35, a 3.5 inch Cine Racer, Cine Whoop, and this is very much an underrated quadcopter. In my humble opinion, this is one of the best quadcopters of 2022, mostly because it flies like a quadcopter without prop cards, but, but still, it has prop cards. And you can probably see why that is. The propeller guards on this quadcopter are slender, thin and stiff also because they are carbon fiber. So that makes this quadcopter again a quadcopter that flies very sporty, like a quadcopter without prop guards. However now Aiken FEV has themselves a new frame. Also go fly Aiken. But this one, let's see, is, is there a name? Yeah, this one's called the Hex 35. So it's also a 3.5 inch quadcopter uh, with propeller guards. It's actually very much the same, but there's a twist. So this Hex 35 frame has a lot to live up to. Is it any good? Let's have a look. <laughs> you serious? So you probably think I'm overstating things when I say uh, the Geek, that Geek 35 is one of the best of last year. I'm not. I very much like that quadcopter. Yeah, and why isn't it more popular? Maybe because uh, Aiken is not that well known in the quadcopter scene yet. Their electronics are well known, but their frames might not be. They're new to that game. So. Uh, yeah, the Hex 35. I haven't taken a look yet, so let's discover uh, this frame together. And the first thing we see is uh, basically the core of the, the frame. It's carbon fiber base plate. And this base plate is mostly, I think, the same. Identical to the Geek 35. The, the, the biggest difference is in the propeller guards, as you'll see. But this is a beefy, basically, this is the entire <laughs> frame. You could fly the quadcopter only with this part of the frame. And therefore, it's good to see that this is super duper stiff. Yeah, that might also be a reason why the, the Geek 35 flies that well. Okay, it's uh, sealed, as you can see, in a plastic bag. We've got an instructions manual. I can already see a surprise, by the way. Huh. Okay. R big surprise. Okay, just like on uh, the Geek 35, you get um, instructions even on tuning. The, the tuning instructions might be for the ready to fly. Uh, I haven't seen specs or pictures of a ready to fly version of this one yet, but. Um, this more or less looks all the same. Okay, and not sure if it'll um, show up well in the, in the video, but you've got exploded views of the frame showing you where all screws go, which is always handy. Okay, we oh we got a lot of zip ties. <laughs> okay, always handy. And this this is a surprise to me. If you were eyeing this frame already and uh, thought, well, let's l watch this video, this will be a surprise to you as well. You've basically got a spare uh, set of ducts, oh, well, ducts, propeller guards, these aren't ducts, and they are slightly different in color. This one is translucent, as you can see, this one is black. But it's definitely nice to see that you get a spare one. Well, spare, different color, but. That uh, makes this uh, frame a whole lot more interesting, I think. Yeah. Okay, more on the difference between the two, the Geek and the uh, Hex, in a minute. But I'm. Th this is a surprise to me, and a very nice surprise at that. Okay, we've got some plastic. This is a uh, an antenna mount. We've got a, a molded, by the way, not printed camera mount with some tools. We've got screws and cables, um, plastic parts, hmm, this is actually different. Okay, this is a bottom plate on which you, for instance, uh, mount your Vista. If you want to go digital with this quadcopter, we've got some Velcro, huh, interesting. And um, a battery strap and a camera strap. That, that's it. That's what you get, so um, yeah, let's lay it all out and see what we have here. 
All right, let's see a couple of points of interest here before I go ahead and build the, the quadcopter or the frame that is. This here is the bottom of uh, the, the base plate and you see this uh, indent uh, that's uh, milled out of the, the top plate. This is where you'd run your battery strap through. So it'll, this is the top where your battery will sit and uh, the battery strip will enter here and come out over here. And by milling this out, they uh, well, they save you the the height of the the battery strap in the in your build stack basically. So stack mounts in this frame, I see 20 by 20 stack mounts. I see uh, whoop style stack mounts. What is that? 25 by 25 probably. <laughs> I don't even know. But um, yeah, in uh, the Geek 35 that older older quadcopter I used a uh, whoop style uh, all-in-one from from Aiken FVB and again this frame accommodates 20 by 20 and I probably will use a 20 by 20 in this frame more on that in a second video in this uh, of this build project and so that's it basically uh, you'll always be mounting your stack in the middle of the frame yeah, there's no secondary spot for, for a stick in the frame. And this here is a again a plastic molded piece, which is uh, your um, uh, FV camera mount. You see the mounting holes over here, but it doubles as an action cam mount. Yeah, um, works. Works very well, even in crashes, so that's nice. And uh, what more can I tell you? Yeah, um, oh yeah, these plastic uh, pieces you see here, those were in the Geek 35 as well. I thought they were different, but they're, they're actually the same. So for you, I think it would be most informative to show you the finished frame now. So let's do a jump cut. And there you have it. And I must say, this is a more of an interesting build than I had anticipated. Definitely some surprises, positive surprises, <laughs> uh, while building this frame. So um, let me see. So you, you've got the, the base plate over here, you've got some standoffs, and then the prop cards, and then uh, the bottom plate over here, and some landing feet. Uh, no fast so far. Over here we've got a crossfire antenna mount, which you can also mount over here, and I probably will. I think it's intended to be mounted over here, which will work. And you also get some shark fins that you can actually mount on top of the motors over here to support that crossfire uh, immortality antenna. Not really needed. I've mounted uh, on the Geek 35 this, uh, this mount over here. TPU printed over here at the, at the rear of the of the frame works works like a charm. However, over here you can actually mount your FVV antenna. They give you this mount mounting plate, which you will probably recognize, right? Yeah, um, for an SMA antenna. Yes, or for an SMA connector for an antenna. Yeah, so you screw that in over here at the rear, but. There's also an antenna mount over here. Not, not sure if it will be clearly visible, but uh, over here there's an antenna mount as well. And it works. Um, I suppose that if you want to mount uh, your antenna over here, that would be for longer range. Having that antenna poke out further from the, from the rest of the frame. Okay, what else? Yeah, uh, this is highly unusual. Uh, you've got um, holes, slits for your battery strip. But you don't even need to use those. This quadcopter frame comes with a highly unusual battery strip with a metal bar over here. And the frame comes with another metal aluminium bar. So what you do is you can actually screw in this bar at the rear of the frame over here. Then mount that other bar over here and well run the battery strap through that. So your battery strap won't run underneath your stack that way at all. Highly unusual. I've never seen this. Yeah, um, obviously with this you can uh, mount your stack even lower so it saves space in the frame. Uh, will this be more durable? Uh, it will definitely not be lighter. Interesting. Definitely very interesting. Never seen that before. 
Okay, um, I haven't used all screws yet. You get uh, screws for your Vista. So you'd be mounting your Vista to this bottom plate, right? And you've got captured nuts over there as well for it. This bottom plate, by the way, also has mountings, um, a mounting pattern for 20 by 20 stacks or a whoop style board. So that's very flexible. And uh, okay, so you get the screws for that and washers to um, uh, electrically uh, isolate the Vista from the rest of the frame. Very, very nice. You also get screws to mount a 20 by 20 stack. And there are captured nuts for that in the base plate as well. Um, you won't be able to see that in the video, but these screws are actually interesting as they only have threading at the very end of the screw. So basically the part of the screw that runs through your stack doesn't have threading. I hope that's uh, clear. Yeah, so interesting. Um, what else? Yeah, you get um, some cabling, probably for a Vista. Yeah, to easily uh, connect and disconnect your Vista. See, you'll be mounting that Vista to the bottom plate and before you can mount the bottom plate, well, uh, it's easy to solder one of these wires to your uh, uh, 4 ESC or other flight controller and the other one to the Vista and then, well, mount the bottom plate and then hook up these connectors. Makes working on your quadcopter a whole lot easier as well. So having this come with the frame, very much appreciated. And uh, also, you get uh, tape to uh, secure the motor wires to the frame. Pretty unusual these days to uh, get that tape with the frame. Nice, I very much appreciate it. And you get some Velcro as well, as mentioned before. Probably in case you don't want to use an uh, anti-slip mat underneath your battery, but want to secure your battery down with Velcro. Some people uh, prefer that, and I can definitely understand. So, the frame comes with Velcro. Yay! Highly uh, appreciated. Yeah, and again, the frame comes with a whole lot of zip ties. Definitely far more than you'll need. Excellent! So, one thing I forgot to do on the Geek 35 is weigh the frame. So let's see what this frame weighs. So, I don't have uh, much in the s uh, sense of uh, frame of reference uh, for weights of uh, frames like this. But let's see what the weight is anyway. It is a 103 grams. So, <laughs> you tell me in the comment section below if that's uh, a lot or good. I think it's not extraordinarily heavy or light. So let's add that battery strap. Yeah, see that's uh, 6 grams. Well, yeah, that's actually not a whole lot for an, uh, well, battery strap with those uh, metal bars, aluminium bars. And let's add the, add the uh, anti-skid pad. So let's call this frame 110 grams. Usually I add a battery strap and an anti-slip mat to the to the frame. And with that, it already has its landing feet on. So, uh, 110 grams. Again, you tell me, and I, I don't think this is uh, extraordinarily heavy. So guys, the Hex 35 from Aiken FPV or Aiken Electronics. Very, very interesting frame. Partly again, because that uh, Geek 35 is a very well behaved quadcopter. So I can't wait to fly this quadcopter. Yeah, this Hex 35. However, <laughs> before I can, I will be recording a video about the uh, all-in-one flight controller slash 4 one ESC I'll be using. It'll also be from uh, Aiken. And it's a new type and size and shape of uh, all-in-one, I think. It's a 20 by 20, but it's an all-in-one. I've, uh, I've seen a couple of uh, these kinds of uh, new type of uh, all-in-ones. And I think, in my humble opinion, uh, that'll be the way to go for the future. Because a 20 by 20 uh, mounting pattern is far more common, making do those uh, all-in-ones more usable in other frames. Yeah, and as uh, electronics become smaller, uh, you don't need that whoop style of uh, size anymore either. 
Okay, what more can I tell you? Yeah, so uh, also I'll be uh, doing a comparison video between this plastic guarded Hex 35 and the Geek 35 with its carbon fiber propeller guards. Should be interesting. I would think that this one has a little more drag. Yeah. But who knows, I'll be um, building the quadcopters uh, with mostly the same setup, same motors, uh, Nebula Pro as uh, the video setup, uh, so same propellers, also crossfire for both of them, so they should be comparable. And in case you're wondering uh, why they even bother making this, uh, this frame as well, well, this one will be a, a little more durable when you crash it onto pavement, for instance. Carbon fiber doesn't fare as well if you crash it on hard surfaces. If you crash it uh, into trees or, and on sand, the carbon fiber Geek 35 will be fine. But yeah, this one will be uh, more wear resistant, if you will. Yeah, but does it fly as well? We'll find out in a future video. <laughs> yeah. For now, I want to thank you for watching. If you are left with questions, hit me up a comment down below. Catch you on the next video. Bye bye.